Hey, I'm Cass from the Canon Collective. One thing I often get asked as a photographer is what gear I use to capture landscapes. So today, I'm going to unpack what's in my usual kit for landscape photography. So first up, it's my favorite, EOS R. At the moment, I've got the 24 to 105 f4 RF lens on here. The reason why this lens stays on my camera pretty much 95% of the time is that I can use it for almost everything. At the moment, I'm running the battery grip on here. Reason being is it means that not only can I run two batteries at a time, so I know I'm not gonna run out, but I've also got a second set of all the controls that I need. Now, with my EOS R, one of my favorite accessories to chuck on the camera is actually my Peak Design ankle links. Reason being is that these are actually quick release, so I can pull my strap off straight away. It's nothing more frustrating than when you're doing a landscape or a long exposure, you've got your camera perfectly set up on your tripod, the wind come through, and it'll pick up your camera strap and it's gonna shake your camera and you'll see that in your photos. So being able to take my camera strap on and off super quick and easily is something that's really important to me. Every landscape photographer's favorite lens. This guy here is my 16 to 35 2.8 lens. I personally prefer the control ring adapter, which means that I can flawlessly connect the EF lenses onto the RF mount using the adapters. So one of the lenses that I actually always carry with me for landscapes is my 70 to 200 2.8. Reason being is I can actually zoom in, pick out particular spots of that landscape that I want to capture without having all the other messy stuff in there. I also really love the compression that this particular lens gives you and you really do get a different look to your images using the different lenses as well. One of my favourite kits are the Hader filter kits. Reason being, I've got everything that I need in the one little pouch and I can clip on these really cool gradient filters. All of these slot onto the end of my lens with a really neat little holder as well. One of the reasons why I love shooting with filters so much in your landscape stuff is that you can do things like your graduating filters where you can stop down any of the really bright lights coming through in the top end of your shots while still maintaining all those lovely dark shadowy areas or you can completely stop down everything so that you can do longer exposures even if it's brighter and sunnier outside. One of the beautiful things about using the EOS R cameras is we've got these really cool new adapters that you can get as well so that I don't actually have to carry around my entire filter kit if I'm just doing a shoot on the run. This particular filter here is the drop-in filter adapter so I can have my EF lenses mounted to my ER body. This has actually got a variable ND drop-in filter built into it, which is really, really cool. So I can actually change how strong that is on the run. Drops in really simply and really tidy. So I've actually got that filter sitting between the camera and the lens. The even cooler thing about that is that means that I can even chuck a gradient filter on the front of the lens while still using this guy as well. Some of the other really important things that I always carry with me on a day-to-day -day basis is obviously a pair of sunnies. You don't want to go blind while you're out and shooting. The other thing I've always got in my camera bag, no matter what I am shooting, is my little accessories kit. So in here, I've got all the essentials. So everything from my little adapter for my computer so that I can plug everything in on the go. The other things that I've always got in this little case as well, are obviously spare memory cards, spare tripod plates as well, because I'm always losing these guys. And then always spare batteries. Now one of the things I always get asked are what my best tips are for landscape photography. And beyond settings, they're pretty simple things to think about, but they're actually going to take your photography to the next level. One of the most important things is look for the light. This is something that applies to all areas of photography, but is especially significant to landscape photography as landscapes change so drastically with shadows and light. Golden hour, the hour after sunrise and before sunset is one of my favorite times to capture landscapes. As you get that glorious golden glow to everything and beautiful dramatic long shadows. 
And the next thing is to focus like a boss. When choosing your focus, it's important to understand that the camera will focus mostly backwards from your focusing point. This means ideally, if you're shooting at say, f11 to 16, you would wanna be focusing on a point that's around about a third of the way into your frame, rather than the mountains in the distance. This will ensure that more of your landscape will be sharp and in focus. Keeping it level. One thing that will stand out straight away is a crooked horizon. And there are a couple of neat features built into your camera that you can take advantage of to ensure a level image. First is in your electronic level available in most new EOS cameras. You can view this by pressing the info button until it appears on the back of your screen. If you have an EOS R range camera, you can even overlay this inside your viewfinder. The second is the grid found in your main menu. I like to set it to the three by three as this gives me not only straight lines to align my horizon with, but it also gives me an easy visual for the rule of thirds. It's easy to plonk your horizon in the center of your photo, but by shifting it up or down to sit along one of those lines of thirds, you'll notice a huge difference in your image. Thanks for looking through my landscape kit. Don't forget to check out the website for other unpacked videos.